This is an Elm City counter. Elm City is the nickname for New Haven in Connecticut and these counters were first made by the Elm City Printers Warehouse. They were intended for printers who could attach one of these counters to the printing machines to count how many issues they were uh, printing. This uh, Elm City Printers Warehouse changed hands many times. In around 1883 is that I know that they were made, making these counters uh, and that was uh, George David Reed Hubbard. After a few years it went to George E. Ives and a few years later to uh, G. Edward Osborne and in 1894 he went bust and this Elm City Printers warehouse uh, disappeared. The counters that they made all had their names here, so E. Uh, G. Edward Ives, for example, would be written down here. And uh, they were all very, very similar to this counter. But this one is later. This one is by the C.J. Root Company. What I suspect happened is that the uh, printer's warehouse, uh, that they uh, subcontracted or outsourced the manufacturing of their counter to C.J. Root. Charles J. Root had, uh, had a factory in Bristol, Connecticut, and uh, there he manufactured uh, small metal items, including counters, uh, hinges, he, he manufactured hinges for the uh, car industry as well, that uh, was beginning to, to flourish. And uh, yeah, so after the printer's warehouse uh, went bust, I think that uh, Charles Root started making these for himself. He did file a patent in 1891. Uh, that was while the city warehouse was uh, still producing under uh, the control of uh, G. Edward Osborne. And, uh, but yeah, so he, Charles had this, this patent for the mechanism and Charles Root also made the Bristol counter and uh, that has the same patent uh, year, so it probably falls under the same patent. It's a very, very simple counter. The, uh, it has five digits, this one. They came in different sizes from two to six digits. And you can just about see that all the axles are slanted to the left. That allows the number wheels to sort of uh, overlap and still be all at the same depth so that they're easily readable. The uh, lever on this side would be attached to the, the mechanism of the printing machine or textile machine, whatever. And each time it moves downwards, it increments the counter. You can see these arrows here. The units wheel moves clockwise, but the tens wheel moves counterclockwise. You can set it using these knobs. Yeah, you should, should really turn it in the direction of the arrow. This particular machine has seen a lot of use. This uh, eye hole here that is connected to the mechanism is all worn out, almost to the edge. These uh, axles, they're simply uh, put through holes in the back plate. And as you can see, the hole here for the units is very worn and much too large. And that has as a consequence that uh, when you try to do carries over uh, several digits, 
that things don't uh, don't work out. Uh, let me just try that. Going over three digits, it just uh, can't handle it. It doesn't click all the way through. But um, if you uh, if if I block the hole or the the gap in the hole, if I put this little uh, screwdriver in here and then pull the lever, then you'll see that it just uh, it carries over normally. It's all the extra uh, movement in the axle that. Uh, yeah, that breaks the carry mechanism. So it's uh, it's it's been used so much that it just stopped working properly. Anyway, so the, as I said, this one was made much later. Even though uh, C J Root uh, had this factory making uh, these machines, he didn't call. Uh, he didn't have a, a company named the CJ Root Company. His uh, counters were just signed CJ Root in Bristol, Con uh, Connecticut. It was only when he died that the company, a company was founded called the CJ Root Company. Uh, Charles Root died in 1907. He was a, a car fanatic. In his factory, he'd, he'd made car parts like the hinges, and uh, yeah, in 1907, he took his uh, uh, Stanley steamer, a steam-powered uh, car, and yeah, he collided with a, a train at a crossing, and uh, was uh, killed instantly. So, so then, some some uh, people got together and uh, formed a syndicate syndicate to buy the assets and founded the uh, Charles uh, the CJ Root company. And they continue to make counters including this Elm City counter from yeah from 1907 onwards. And uh, in 1928 the uh, the company merged with uh, Vida and became Vida Root, which is a well-known name in the manufacturing of counters, because Vida made counters as well, smaller, different ones, and Vida Root was the almost uh, almost had a monopoly in America on uh, making mechanical counters. I can open this up just to show you the mechanism inside. There's not a lot to show really. Just lift this up. And there you go. An extremely simple mechanism. Each wheel simply has uh, one long uh, bar or tooth that uh, is used uh, that performs the carry. It simply uh, moves the next wheel along. And the unit wheel here, it uh, it has this ratchet mechanism. With the for the uh, for the lever, and all the wheels have a little uh, leaf spring against the uh, tooth wheel, so that they uh, yeah, so that they click into uh, into position, so that they align properly. Yeah, it doesn't work now because the uh, axles are all moving a bit too freely, but uh, yeah, that's how the carry should work. So uh, as you can see, these uh, these wheels move in uh, opposite directions 
just so that you can do it, perform a carry without having an intermediate wheel between them. So this was the Elm City counter, in this case by the CJ Root Company. Thank you for watching.